Reverse engineering time. This is a remote switch. Uh, you press the button and it'll turn this module on and off. You put AC on these two sides here and it'll load here. One real classic use of this would be uh, putting this on the wall. It's meant for a wall mount. And uh, if you have a lamp in a room and of course you want to come in and press this, a button and turn the lamp on. Let's do some reverse engineering. Uh, this is going to be a relatively interesting teardown. Uh, there's a, a 433 megahertz RF remote. takes a 12 volt battery to switch this module on and off. Let's zoom into the circuit board and uh, see what we can find out. Uh, there is a digital section which is comprised of this single device here called the EV1527. And then uh, it looks like a discrete implementation of an RF circuit up here. Uh, those appear to be transistors. Uh, we'll take a good look at that in a second. And then the user interface uh, is basically a push button, which of course uh, tells the uh, remote to produce a signal. And uh, then there's actually an LED down here, which turns blue to indicate you press the button. All right, let's uh, dive into it. Uh, let's take a look at what this thing called the EV1527 is. So let's uh, put a scope probe on the output of this integrated circuit here. Uh, just taking the cover off, you press the button, uh, you'll see a blue light uh, blinks. And what it does, of course, is it generates an RF signal along this antenna. Let's uh, probe the security of this particular product. So every time I press the button, it produces a, a, a fixed pattern. Basically, there's this thing here which wakes up the uh, output of the oscillator. Then it produces a fixed series of digits. Uh, I'll just insert a picture here, but uh, the output of the bytes is FC, FC, 1C. And it never changes because every time you press the button, uh, it's just simply the same pattern. So although this thing can produce a 20-bit unique pattern, it's probably programmed into the chip and doesn't change. And that's fine, of course, because the manufacturer keeps on incrementing the serial number. Of course, each switch is unique, and you can learn them to the controls. So you could have many of these in your home, and that'd be fine. They wouldn't interfere with each other. However, from a security viewpoint, because the pattern of the digits is always fixed, uh, it is susceptible to what's known as a side channel attack. You basically just could record the RF coming out of a switch when someone presses it, clone the pattern, and then, of course, you'd have control over the device. Obviously, not much of a concern if it's something as simple as a uh, lamp in your home. Uh, a bit more annoying if you're trying to do something more secure. And if you just press the button and keep it pressed down, all it, all it does is it just simply generates the same pattern uh, each time. All right, let's change uh, domains here. This is an RF amplifier and a near-field probe pointing onto the antenna there. Uh, let's go up to the spectrum analyzer and look at the signals that this uh, module is producing in the frequency domain. Okay, uh, let's see here. It's just uh, free sweeping here. Let's put it into uh, 433 megahertz. Um, 433 megahertz for the center frequency since that's what it claims to be. Oh, and let's give it a, um, a span of maybe 20 megahertz. And let's press the button and see what we can see. Okay, so a burst of energy, no surprise there. Um, I just hold the button down and off it goes. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh, change the trace uh, display to uh, max hold A, they call it in the, uh, these type of uh, spectrum analyzers. And uh, there we have it. We have a nice uh, pattern coming up. And uh, the peak search, peak says it's at uh, 434.2 megahertz there at the very top. And uh, then it rapidly drops down. What you don't notice is any uh, bands coming down. Uh, there's no uh, bimodal operation of the frequencies. I suspect this is something called amplitude uh, switch keying. Basically, it's just going to be turning on the carrier wave of 433 megahertz on and off. Uh, I think perhaps one of the tri most trivial ways of modulating a signal. Uh, but this is the pattern here that's very typical of that type of, uh, of uh, behavior. Let's uh, analyze the RF circuit uh, in uh, SPICE, actually. We're gonna, we'll drop that uh, schematic reverse engineer, drop into SPICE, uh, and prove that, indeed, that's uh, what this thing does. Okay, we looked at uh, desirable signals. Let's look at the uh, undesirable ones and see if they're there. I'm tracing from uh, 10 megahertz on the left side to 1.8 gigahertz on the right side, which is the limit of this uh, spectrum analyzer. I just go with max hold A and then press the button a few times to see if the signal rises up or is desired and perhaps elsewhere. And uh, sure enough, we have the uh, signal that we actually want. And uh, that's this one here, but sitting at 440, which is fine. Uh, unfortunately, there's harmonics uh, that are fairly strong. And uh, let's see, go to the next peak. Uh, here's one at 874, point substantive, uh, 1.31 gigahertz and 1.7 gigahertz. Uh, unfortunately, those actually could interfere with other communication devices. Uh, they do complain, they do uh, state that they comply with FCC regulations. There's a mark on the actual product. Uh, I have my suspicions, though, that uh, like, these frequencies here would be pretty darn high. 
uh, for an intentional radiator uh, on the undesired frequencies. Okay, the star of the show for this particular design is a surface acoustic wave resonator marked E45. Um, and as you search on the web, you can actually find data sheets fairly quickly for it. It's a pretty popular device. 433 for like garage door openers is a very popular frequency. So I imagine they're made uh, in very high quantities. There's two transistors and they're very different. This one marked R25 is a RF transistor, the uh, 2SC3356. And the transistor down here is a Jelly Bean NPN transistor. Um, and not very interesting at all. The idea of this particular device is that this transistor is in what's known as a coal pits uh, topology. There's a capacitor here, even though the capacitor is actually not there. And there's a capacitor here. And then there's the saw resonator and then the amplifier. Uh, these are the building blocks of a coal pits. The output of this device here that just generates a 20-bit key comes up, goes into this transistor here, and the base of this transistor here is connected to this oscillator in such a way that it will turn the oscillator on and off. That's known as amplitude shift keying. Um, and then if you trace it further, the signal comes all the way down here, eventually into a resistor diode combination. This is an LED and blinks the light. So the way that works is that the switch is pressed that tells what's probably a tiny little microprocessor in this device uh, to send a signal. Uh, it sends it out this way and it causes it to modulate this transistor and the oscillator is woken up and then basically keyed on and off with that pattern. You can see actually a couple other uh, footprints. There's actually uh, three switches allowed. Um, very common if this is used like in a garage door application, especially in America where it's not too uncommon to have multiple garage doors on a garage. You can have multiple buttons that opens up uh, each remote. So, um, same strategy though, uh, what it comes down to this chip here, there's optional inputs and it knows about them. And what it does, it encodes a slightly different uh, keyword uh, onto the RF signal. All right, enough of that. Let's uh, dive. Okay, I've uh, translated the circuit uh, into space and uh, it's not an exact match. If you start checking down, you'll see that I use an RF transistor, which isn't quite the same one there, uh, but conceptually uh, very similar. The modeling of the uh, saw resonator uh, is almost exactly the same as you would do for a crystal. There's emotional inductance and emotional capacitance. And then there's some resistance of the saw. And then there's the actual capacitance of the case of the crystal. Uh, ah, there you go. Use the word crystal, a uh, saw resonator. Uh, Cole Pitts uh, topology. Basically, we have uh, two capacitors here. And then this is the inductor. There's the RF transistor, of course, providing the application. Uh, this is the power supply coming down. They're inductors, so they are um, zero resistance at low frequency. And of course, at the RF frequencies, they appear to be open uh, open circuits. And you can see up here uh, with the yellow, with the yellow, uh, with the red trace uh, of a classic one of an oscillator starting up. Um, it only takes about six microseconds to start up. And let's just see if I can zoom in and um, you'll see it's uh, approximately the uh, 400 or so megahertz uh, as desired. Okay, uh, just a little more modeling on the circuit that quenches. You can see I even, even modeled the LED, uh, although it doesn't really participate in the circuit in terms of uh, quenching the oscillator. Uh, as this uh, transistor is drawn low by what's modeled here is just a pulse circuit, uh, that's actually the output of that little 8-pin uh, uh, semiconductor. It basically comes down and quenches out the oscillator uh, and you can see that up here, uh, the control signal goes low uh, and it oscillates. And then when it goes high, it, it slows down and oscillates less. Um, although in fact, in real life, it actually uh, stops oscillating entirely. Uh, because the parasitics of this high Q circuit aren't really modeled that well, uh, the oscillator actually gamely tries to actually continue to, to oscillate, uh, even though actually it does quench out in real life. So I'll put this uh, LT Spice file on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com, should you wish to uh, play with it. Uh, however, it is a classic uh, Cool Pits uh, design. Well, there we go. Uh, that is a inexpensive RF switch from AliExpress. If for some crazy reason you want to capture the same one, uh, that's the listing I found it at, uh, although I paid only $4. So um, the pricing in AliExpress seems very dynamic. Um, 
But if you look for RF Wolves, which uh, it seems to pop up a lot of listings, although I would warn you that they do seem to be sometimes different. So if you have some great desire for this specific model, um, take care to see if you have them match up. The pictures um, are flying by here. I hope that was of interest. Uh, if so, uh, give it a thumbs up and I will see you on the next one.